Okay, folks, we're going to uh, talk about something I just uh, built here, a little RF uh, amp meter. So I'll give you some background. Uh, I bought this new MFJ uh, RF current meter here recently. Got it home. It's uh, somewhat hokey, but it actually works. has a little clamp-on uh, uh, transducer type of thing here where they sample the RF. Problem is, is they screwed up with the way you open this. The instruction manual says there's a tab you squeeze on it. There's no tab. There's two little interlocking holes here, and there's no way to open it. So instead, what came taped to the bag, see there's a piece of scotch tape here. <clears throat> it's not an instruction manual anywhere, but there was this little piece of uh, aluminum, as I call it. Actually aluminum, just trying to be funny. And as uh, soon as I saw that on the bag, I didn't know what it was at first when I took the instrument out of the bag. But I knew it was purpose-built, so I set it aside. And shortly into playing with the, the meter, I realized that uh, uh, this is what it was for. So to open this little uh, split core, you have to stick these two little fingers in these holes here to release it. As such, there it pops and kind of opens, trying to do that left-handed. So that kind of works. Uh, so I tethered it to to the instrument with a piece of uh, nylon mason line right there so I don't lose it. Kind of hooky, but that's okay. And it works so you can actually clamp it on uh, your coaxes here to look for current mode or common mode current and that sort of stuff. And uh, it works pretty well. The instruction manual does talk about how to calibrate it. Uh, they say, uh, they show a little sketch there with a dummy load, and that's what we're going to talk about here. Uh, and they say if you put this in here, it should measure 1 amp. So they're saying 50 watts should measure 1 amp into a true 50 ohm dummy load. An equation they use is uh, current equals uh, square root of P over R. So if you had uh, 50 watts into 50 ohms is 1, square root of 1 is 1. So one amp that's how they calibrate that so on this device you set the meter to one amp and you just put this in line i took two so239 connectors male connectors put them in line i went to uh antenna output two on my big kenwood the ts890 uh, antenna two set it to whatever power you want 50 watts 15 watts and it seems to work uh the only issue with this is uh you have a little tether that doesn't bother me so much kind of works eventually it's going to wear out and break or something uh, the device is kind of sturdy typical mfj here i put the new battery in typical mfj aluminum case uh, but the weight of it there's no that that coil that hole is pretty tight so if you had it on these rigid coaxes it tends the weight of the, the device tends to want to open it so if you want to hang it unattended it's really, really difficult, at least in my ham shack, with all these uh, rigid uh, uh, big coaxes. A lot of this is LMR 400, some RG8, uh, 9913 on a couple of these here. The outside 9913, I think. So that's kind of the issue I had. It's like, gosh, it would be nice if it had a remote uh, clamp, a clamp you can hold on like a clamp meter. So I got to thinking about it, I looked at the schematic. I said, gosh, that can't be hard to make. So I actually made one here, and I'm going to take it apart and show you how it's constructed. But before that, I have a little test jig here, and I repurposed an old meter. So an old meter movement. Uh, I have tons of those, not tons, but I wish I had more. I have some meter movements here. i get the light up on here. Uh, I like playing around with old meter movements. I wish I had more meters. Maybe somebody sees this will donate uh, some more meters, various meters. Uh, I like playing with that. But anyway, I found this one. It's uh, General Electric. I worked for both General Electric and Westinghouse years ago. So I took it apart, fussed with it. The skin was kind of yellowed. I thought it was kind of like smoky from an industrial situation. Tried hitting it with Windex and 409. Still shows yellow. Uh, but nonetheless, it had uh, 1.0 scale. So I thought, well, you know, I could do a uh, times 10. I could say uh, that this is 1.0 amp, and if I wanted to do uh, divide by 10, I could uh, set up a resistor network to make that 100 milliamps, 50 milliamps would be useful. I still may do that. So basically what I did is uh, I found one of these clamp-on, uh, these ferrite noise 
uh, dealy wops here these chokes and run uh, it's it's twice as wide as the one that's on the MFJ so and that's 10 turns so says the manual so this one I put five turns with the trim pot I used a 1N 4148 detector diode uh, that's across the uh, 68 ohm resistor and we could talk about that later and uh, there's a little capacitor down in there and a diode and a little trim pot in that probe but anyway we'll go to that in a minute but let's uh, try it out here so there's our calculation right uh, current is equal to the square root of power over resistance so I did a couple of spot checks on this and According to this, uh, 50 watts, as the book says, should equal 1 amp. And so I have the radio set, well, it's not set to 50, so 15, let's go to 50 watts. Okay, uh, 50 watts, not 55. And 50 watts, and if I key down, it's exactly 1 amp. So, if you can see that, right there, 1 amp. And so I had to do the resistor divider network. Which comes out pretty close to what the book says, I think. Well, maybe not. So I have a, the uh, the sensor inside of here has a uh, a 1K trim pot. I only had a 2K trim pot, so I went with a 2K trim pot. Close enough. Uh, I played with the resistor divider network or the resistor network. Well, the, the resistor series resistor. It come out with uh, looks like 5K, uh, from what I could tell. So 5K, a little tweak on that pot seem to do okay so there's your one amp so this will be really good and uh, according to the chart here, let's spot check some other stuff well it's not in order but if we go to 20 watts uh, that should be square root of uh, 20 over 50 should be 0.44 uh, or 0.632 amps so let's go dial up 20 watts here uh, or down down to 20 watts and key up and uh, not quite 0.63, but in the ballpark, that's that's close enough. Uh, six, so that would be 0.6 amps, or yeah, 0.632, close enough for 20 watts. We'll try 15 watts. We'll go down here to 15 watts, and 15 watts should be about 0.54. Uh, should be half an amp, and yep, so 0.5, uh, close enough, half an amp. So that's going to work out good. And all the way down at 10 amps should be 0.447. So, or 10 amps, yeah, 10 watts. So we'll go to 10 watts on the radio. Uh, I had my bird watt meter in line before when I was calibrating the other one or checking the calibration on this one. It was actually pretty close from the factory, the trim pot in there. So I touched that one up. And that uh, that's fairly accurate. So 10 watts, according to this, should be 0.44 amps 447 actually and there you go 0.4 not 0.44 but it's close enough and uh so there you have it so um five watts if you did the math so there's about two so yeah i'm pretty happy with this so <clears throat> uh, let's go look at the details i'm going to take this off here if i can get it off here oh, I'm trying to do this left-handed so let me set the phone down here one second and let's get this baby off my case. So set the phone down. So there was uh, my little tap for tapping into the dummy load. Uh, it's a series circuit, so you can be on either side of these mag those magnet wires. But uh, yeah, here's the probe. It's pretty cool. So I got some of this wire years ago. Sorry for all the blurry uh, shaking around. So here is uh, whoop. here's our animal here. So. Uh, there's a, a turn. Let me open this baby up. So open it up. It's one of these uh, clamp-on uh, ferrite cores. I get them. I got them online somewhere. Probably an FT uh, dash 43 material is my guess. I don't know. Actually, I have the paperwork for it. I can go find out what it was I got. But I cut the latches off. They had little latches uh, on here. And uh, I just had one of these little uh, clamps laying around here in my little tool area here. And uh, I said, well, you know, let me guess with five turns. I wired five turns of the magnet wire on here. Uh, and, the, and the magnet wire actually holds it on. And uh, it works out really well. That hole is just perfect size for the bigger coax. You just kind of reach in there and clamp it on. Uh, so some of the electronics. Uh, 
there's the trim pot there's a 68 ohm resistor that's to kind of uh, make the impedance low so that the sampling is a little bit more stable and linear kind of guarantee some more linearity the five turns into a low impedance and then the trim pot samples that down and then the detector diode is down in there I don't know if you can see it I don't know how close this thing can zoom in but there is a detector diode on a wiper of the uh, trim pot and there's a 0 .1, 0 0.01 cap like a little filter cap a green one flat one I kind of wedged that back behind the trim pot and uh, work with this coax this uh, really thin it's sort of like RG174 it's all silver silver plated or silver wire uh, it's really nice. It's got a real nice uh, Teflon slippery coating. Uh, the center is really thin. It's near impossible to strip out, but uh, I did it and just kind of clamped that on there. Some heat shrink tubing, soldered it on there, and uh, gave me a little bit of length of wire. Uh, the meter, if I make it permanent, so I just have it right there uh, like that. So I just got the resistor decade box in series with the, uh, the meter. So what do we say about 5K? So I may just put a 5K resistor on the back of this meter, call it good, put in a little enclosure. Uh, there it is. There's that really thin coax. And I'm talking that stuff is really thin, this little wire here. So best bet is just be really careful, cut it with an X-Acto knife, tin it down, and let some of that solder get down behind the insulation. That is really thin stuff. Uh, and there's my, there's my current probe, so I'll be able to go over there and check all my different coaxes. And uh, like I said, put this in a little enclosure. Uh, I don't need to power it because I don't need an op amp. If I stay within uh, 300 milliamp range is about all you can expect here through this stuff without uh, uh, using an amplifier. And that's how this thing works. So this is unpowered between 300 milliamps, 1 amp, and 5 amps. These other three ranges have an op amp in here. And uh, you turn that button on, you press that button, it'll energize the op amp for 15 to 20 seconds. So I'm not worried about uh, that right now, measuring really low current. So uh, all of my current seems to be between, uh, you know, a couple hundred milliamps and one amp. So this will be perfect for that. The reason I did this is I'm measuring, I'm seeing some really, really weird uh, currents here and I'm kind of concerned about them. Uh, on my inverted L uh, on 160, I am getting 100 milliamps coming back on the shield of the, of the common mode by itself. And uh, I want to track that down. I don't have it on 80, 40, anywhere else, but just 160. But if I have my sloper, I have my another sloper on another tree out in the backyard uh, connected to the uh, coax switch, uh, coax switcher box here. Even if I don't have it selected, this, this is 160 meter uh, uh, inverted L. If I have that one selected only, with all these other ones connected, I'm drawing 600 milliamps here. If I disconnect everything else, there's only about 100 milliamps there. So when I, I uh, strategically started going down this road of just doing one by one to see where these currents are coming. Uh, so there's uh, 600 milliamps once I add that sloper. Uh, actually, yeah, it's over 160 milliamps here. Uh, and then when I add on my 20 and 40 meter dipole, which are on top of the house, uh, not really even close to my 160, that adds uh, another 150 milliamps. And when I add my 14 AVQ, my HF vertical, four band vertical, it adds another 40 milliamps, all measured on the uh, ground side of my inverted L here, the 160 and 80. So I don't know what's happening, which way these currents are flowing whether the 160 is radiating into those other antennas and they're coming here and finding the ground path back through the 160 shield. And maybe that's the direction of the common mode from the other antennas that are picking up and uh, running it back down this here. Because I notice when I disconnect everything and have only the, the 160, I'm only reading, I think, about 100 milliamps, which is still too much. Uh, I shouldn't have any common mode currents in here. I mean, I have six... FT240-43 is out at the feed point. I have one back down in here. Uh, I have some other chokes and balance I'm going to try here, but I'm more interested to see why I'm going from 100 to 600 milliamps. So uh, with this new little portable deal here, this will help facilitate it. I could just have this meter in a box here 
And even if I need to go outside, look at the feed point, and uh, uh, I don't even need to put this in a box. I could tether this on this wire on here somehow, and just walk around and have my uh, my RF uh, amp meter here with a current probe style. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. These are really easy to make. Uh, if I'd have known, been any wiser, I would have just built this instead of buying this one. This was over $100. And, uh, but that's okay. It's, it's a smart looking piece of equipment. It does have the amplifier built in for less than 300 milliamps. So maybe that has some value. Uh, I mean, I could have built an off amp in here too with some batteries, watch batteries, whatever. So this is pretty crude, pretty sketch, but it seems to work. I mean, it's all relative for, for what it is I'm trying to find and learn about. So uh, this is pretty cool. I'm really excited about this. So 7-3, everybody. We'll see you later. Bye.